So I'm just going to answer your questions here. All right. What are the most frequently asked questions that you get from other lawyers, attorneys regarding the business of law? I mean, knowing that kind of question or those kind of questions can really help focus in on what people really do want when it comes to a, a book of this kind. Okay. So looking at it just from a chapter perspective, I've had a lot of those. And a lot of that's based off that whole question, okay? Um, and it's how do I advertise? How do I get my name out there? I don't think lawyers think of it as how do I get my brand out there, but that's what it is, okay? And your brand is you. Your brand should be your name, right? Um, so how do I get out there, period? How do I, how do I compete? against larger firms, against other attorneys, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think you do. I think you have to commit to do your own thing and dominate that. Right, right. Well, that's another... You just can't worry about it. Specifying specificity. When you're looking at what your competition is doing or what they're doing, um, you're wasting energy and wasting time. Mm -hmm. You just need to be committed to what you're doing, and it needs to be at a really high level. Right. So, yeah. so how can I get my name out there? And, and I don't think enough thoughts put in, into that. You know, it's, ah, uh, dude, I'm going to get lost in a sea of the yellow pages. And that's explored in that chapter on the art of omnipresence a lot. Yeah. Right? Like, oh, should I get in the yellow pages? Should I do this? You know, pretty much if you're going to do what everybody else has done, the answer is no. I mean, you know, pretty much. It, um, because everybody's there. You're going to be wasting your money. You're going to get lost. And you can't compete with the big guys, Right? You need literally a blue ocean to swim in, yeah. not a red ocean that's, that's where there's blood in the water already. And, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because you're not designed it yet. You don't have the money or the size or the power to compete with the big the big sharks yet in that arena. And why would you want to anyway? So yeah, you, you, shouldn't, to. you shouldn't have to at that stage. Right? I agree. So um, um, I think a lot of it's based on, I think a lot of the legal industry is based on fear. Um, that's I mean, a, from a totally lawyer's perspective or a concept, a consumer's perspective. Fear from the lawyer's perspective. Okay. You're scared. What will, what will my fellow attorney think? Mm -hmm. What will the consumer think? You don't realize that your job is to get attention. So when, so when they're trying to, you know, when an attorney, they want to, they want to create this persona that's just this untarnished, you know, highbrow respect, okay? But that's, I think that can be done tastefully, but also you can get your brand out there. How about that? I think you can do both. Yeah. But you got to get attention at yeah. some point. You just have to get attention. You got to know your message as well. Right? You have you need to know your message, right? Stay on point with your message. I agree. What's your brand about? Um, so, so I think that lawyers want to get out there. That's what they want to do. That's what they ask about. Mm -hmm. But they're scared to do it. They're they they fear what their their other they're too tied in with the bar, the local bar, and the state bar. And not that those aren't great things. They're good collegial things, okay? Is, is there but you're always worried about what your fellow attorney is going to do. Is there yes. a lot of restrictions on them? There are. What they can do to mock him. There, there are, yeah. And that's another part of the fear, okay? Is there are restrictions on how you can advertise and get your brand out there, okay? But, but, but it's my point that you're not advertising. Stop thinking of it as advertising, period. Don't advertise Right. What's advertising? Advertise. Oh, time. Ah, if the product is good enough, you shouldn't have to advertise technically. But you can educate. Yeah. You can yeah. say, look, that's, I have yeah, a lot to talk about, and it's right. really meaningful. That's right. where a lot of, some of even the biggest companies don't advertise. They just do it from a perspective of knowing they have a great product, and they get interviews all the time to promote that product, but they're not actually paying for advertising. They completely cut out that entirely. Which is, which is great. I mean, if you're doing what you're doing, as in you're, you are getting articles written by you, you're getting articles written about you, 
That, that reminds me, I need to whittle down about a 1,750-word article interview down to 750 words. I've got a ton of those you can do that. for a, a local paper that I need to, to get down to 750 words in each one of those. As long as you know what you want to say, you can, you can quite easily do that. Yeah, I need to go through uh, several of them. I'm going to do three. I thought you actually said a 1,750 page article. No, 1,750 word uh, or, uh, uh, interview down to 750 words for an article. Do three tonight. I'm going to do three tonight. So, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, educate. Put out good content. Put out good messages. And really have a freaking opinion. I talked about that too. Yeah. Yeah. Have I talked about that enough? Didn't I do some new work, new thing about having an opinion and coming down on the side of issues? Didn't I do something like that recently? I think I did. That's so important. I don't important. which one it was. I'm picking up haters. Yeah. Just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You did do that. Yeah. I remember that bit. Have a freaking polarizing message. Yeah. I mean, have an opinion. Because you don't have to make say, one up. Because as you say, that actually will advertise you like crazy. Like even, a, even more so than do people that don't like you yeah. are going to spread your word ten times more than people who do. Okay? And the point is to get attention with your name and your brand for a reason. Yeah. And yeah. look, people are forgetting, people understand that you have an opinion. Okay? But a lot of people have forgotten that they can have one too. Okay? Yeah. And then it's okay to put it out there. We gotta be so politically correct and everything else. There's an actual political candidate right now who is just killing it because of that entire concept. That's probably 20 points ahead in the polls. And that's the reason he's ahead. Mm -hmm. He has an opinion, or at least he wants to put out an opinion to get attention. Yeah. And then he can back off of that and explain every time. And that's how he does it. All right, I'm talking about getting Trump like attention right now. Yeah. And, okay. Well, I, I, and a lot of people just. I assumed it was. Just like, oh my God. To mention his name. Dude, right. you know how much money he's. Jeb Bush has spent like 41 million or something, they're saying, on campaign ads. Dude, he can't. He can't even touch Trump. I mean, he can't. He's not. He's Donald Trump's like 40 points ahead in the polls. It's some ridiculous ahead of Jeb. He brings Jeb's barely on the charts. You know how much Trump spent on media advertising or advertising commercials or anything else? $210,000. He's a billionaire, okay? He just uses the media. He knows how to use them as well. Whereas it's simple. Think, it's, I'm telling you exactly how to do yeah, it. Bush, I don't think he's got the, uh, quite what it takes to be a president. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good word. Dude, yeah. You yeah. Well, you just word in there for you. So, <laughs> what, that's why Hayden was telling me before we left. She was saying, be a Mitch. I was like, what's that? She's like, be a man. You know, have, have an opinion, man. You know, be, be a man. That's, that's another Yiddish word, though. Okay. <laughs> I hate this one, okay? Um, she's married to a Jewish guy from New York. Great guy. Okay, from New York City, from Brooklyn, okay? And she said, be a man. That's all you did. I mean, you know, and with your opinions, too. Have a freaking opinion, you know? Right. And don't be yeah. scared to say it. I don't care if it's right or wrong. No opinions are right or wrong, dude. It's what, I mean, well, maybe yeah, it is. Exactly. I don't know. It's, it's just your opinion. It's your right? opinion, yeah. Exactly. So put it out there. But see, the thing is, is fans are going to love you. They're going to love you. Your fan base are going to love you. And that's how you develop fans. If you don't ever have a strong opinion, you'll never develop fans. Mm -hmm. And that's the point, is to have a ridiculously strong opinion. Yeah. So you can develop a fan base that agrees with your opinion and develop a hater base that advertises your opinion more than your fan base does. Yeah, that actually, funny enough, makes sense. I guess the point is... To take a Donald Trump example, okay, of the current presidential race, is to use a very small comparatively ad budget, very small to nothing ad budget, and compete with, not compete, but dominate, absolutely dominate somebody who's spending literally hundreds of thousands of times as much as you are trying to get the same attention. And that's, you can do that as a yeah. single a solo practitioner or as a, a guy or gal in a 500 person firm to advertise your special niche or whatever you're doing. Right. And if right. your firm tells you to shut up, what should you do? 
Well, I know what you would do. Oh, no. I'm sure you read it there. Yeah. Lee Cliff, yeah. Yeah. Because you were the wrong firm, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that that's people want to know how can you get attention? How can you advertise your brand? But then they don't really want it. So you have to really understand it and want it. And you got to be tough. Yeah, you have to have a really. You good have brand. to be freaking tough, to man. Yeah. So I think that's something too. You got to learn how to be tough, which is the chapter on do crazy shit. That's what it's talking about. It's talking about, and I don't think I really emphasize being tough. In the in that chapter, okay. I don't know if that's going to be the final name of it, but don't I have a chapter from Do Crazy Shit? Mm, no. No. It may be in there somewhere, but not as a chapter title. So. Oh, I know where it's at. But work life balance is bullshit. <laughs> that's my first chapter. No, chapter one. See, I didn't. Did, I, did you get, did you get the other note for chapter one where I developed yeah. out the exercises? That's exercise one, or step one, do crazy shit. That's right, yeah. So, another aspect of that is, uh, <laughs> is get tough, okay? You, you, you need to develop a thick skin. You want to demonstrate illegal. Who cares, man? <laughs> what is it for getting illegal now? You probably, know what I'm probably, saying? Probably you. Dude, get arrested. Get a, I mean, you really want to go nuts on it? <laughs> get freaking arrested. Get on the USA Today and New York Times. Attorney runs naked down the street. <laughs> you know, that would make a bestseller. Dude. You, know, you may have to do it. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. If we, how many books are we writing this year? We're going to do, we need to do our planner, okay? Are we writing one, right. two, or three? Right. Oh, for, you mean 2016? Yeah. Dick's Reagan. We can okay. do it. We got the next one too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I got four four ideas in the pipeline. You could do a book called "Do Crazy Shit." Do Crazy Shit would be a cool book. Yeah. I mean, you just, you you, you got to get used to doing things outside the box and thinking differently. Lawyers think that they can't think differently. Now, yeah. I can't tell you how much this applies to every industry on planet Earth, by the way. Okay. Yeah, that's the Steve Jobs big thing. I think differently. I mean, that was his whole one of his whole campaigns. Well, you okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm not in the vein of Steve Jobs or trying to mimic or idolize Steve well, Jobs. No, no, but he was, yeah, what he, but, what he, but he was pretty successful right. in what what he wanted to do and yeah. not following the norm. Yeah. But he knew he was right. Everybody else just had to catch up. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, I think part of that's getting tough. Uh, develop a thick skin. No, you're right. Trust yourself. That's a big one. Too. Yeah, that is a big one. Know that you can. And I guess I'm saying don't, don't second guess yourself. But so many people do think that, you know, the Trumps can do it, the Jobs can do it, the Musks can do it, but. But I can't that's do because it. They that's can. them. They're them, you know. Yeah, but who the hell are they? Billionaires, and you kind of think, well, uh, they're they always billionaires. Been, no, dude. I mean, comparatively, them. Trump was born rich. There's no doubt about it. But, but his dad was working his tail off. He wasn't that well off. I mean, it was two, 250 was million bucks is, it, that he got was not, I mean, that's a high. You know what I'm saying? But he's he's certainly multiplied well. It has a great work ethic. If you look at the person he is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's done well with it. I agree with that. But his dad was a tough dude. I bet you his dad was. Well, I know he was a real estate developer in, right? in like Brooklyn, okay, on, on residential properties. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I you, I just have to imagine that's just like a knockdown, drag out, scrappy world, you know, mob infested, you know, world probably. Okay, and he was successful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, you have to believe that you going after those contracts. That's a dirty business, man. All those building contracts in New York City and Brooklyn and things like that. Yeah. I mean, you gotta be yeah, a tough dude. Was. So, develop a. Th I mean, but you know, and you know, what his, you know, what his dad told him something that that I thought was really cool was uh, um, always attack. It's pretty much that idea. Just always attack, never let up, never stop, like a pit bull mentality. 
Mm-hmm. That's why you'll see him like, you know, like, dude, you should just stop like saying really bad crap about Megan Kelly. You know what I mean? Like, it's enough already. You know what I mean? He he does not know that. Wait, because because he he, he 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 like idolized his dad, right? And it was his dad's right hand man, so he's seen his dad be successful with those tactics. So he's gonna kill you until you're dead, okay? <laughs> and then and then say some other crap about you, okay? And, you know, and, and make sure the job's done, I guess. But there's, I mean, that mentality is what is all, is really kind of that tenaciousness is what I think you have to have. You gotta be, and you gotta be tough. You gotta expect criticism. Yeah. Expect mistakes. Like, I know there's attorneys out there that I used to practice with locally, right? That have probably had a lot of bad stuff to say behind my back or if they're eating lunch or what's McIntyre doing over there. You know what I'm saying? But whatever, I mean... Dude, I mean, it's just part. I gotta expect that mm-hmm. until I get to where I want to be. Well, mistakes are made. You can always fix them, but they do. They do show that you are. Decisions are being made, and you are moving forward. You get killed at the crossroads. Even, yeah, even if you're making them, you're still making the decisions. You get killed at the crossroads, standing in the middle of a decision point, right? In the middle of a crossroads. Right. That's where you get run over. Yeah, you gotta pick a road. You've got to make the decision. I don't care if it's the wrong road. Yeah. And you know what? If you're if you're if your brain's wired decently, you know, you got you know a decent moral compass, you're not gonna make horrible decisions. You know what I'm saying? They're not gonna be that bad. But no, just make it. Yeah, yeah, they can always be fixed. Yeah, correct course. I think you just gotta go. That's right. So so back to the original question, which was what are the most frequently asked questions that you get from other lawyers, attorneys regarding the business of law? Ah, oh, dude. Um, delegation. That's another huge one. Delegation. They don't want to delegate. Yeah. Okay, that's themselves. the result of about 20 questions that I just heard in my head. <laughs> and, and that I've said before, and that other attorneys have said before, mm-hmm. which are, oh my God, the taxes are such a headache. Payroll taxes. I can't get good help, okay? All this falls under delegation. That's the reason I say that, okay? But is that also, they're not wanting to let go of control. They're delegation and control. control. That, that's a great That's a great chapter or some chapter, okay? I'll, I'll throw that in there. Is that okay? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'll, I'll throw it in there somewhere. I don't know... Uh, where, but uh, I'll just make a chapter 11 or something right now, okay? And, and it could be brought in as a subchapter, but delegation and control. I love that. It is, but it does stand psychologically from control. That's what it is. Um, but they know no one person. Can and there's fear. I'm telling you, there's a bar. Yeah. All, all these, all these. Regulations, which are, I mean, they're in place for a good reason, but they put, they put fear in, in the attorney. You have to, and all this stems from systems too. Do I have a chapter on systems in here? Uh, you've got a, a chapter on um, goal setting and planning for lawyers. See, okay, um, so no. Exactly. All right. And that was that was one thing I wanted to ask. This this uh, the lawyer planner that you have here, you've got link to buy it off lawyergreg.com website yeah. in the ebook. Does that mean it's actually gonna be this chapter? That that planning for lawyers? Or the lawyer planner? Is it gonna be Is that, that in a goal? Or? That's in the goal say chapter, right? That's yes. the goal say. Yes. Yeah. Systems could be in another chapter today. Systems and processes. So that could be another chapter. Um, 
back to your point or your question. Um, no, I need to pull up the book right system, okay? That's the development system on here mm -hmm. um, for ebooks and for uh, um, actual print books and, and go ahead and, and design out the lawyer plan. I need to design out the lawyer plan. I'd love to brainstorm with you the lawyer plan. Okay, I think we could probably knock it out in an hour or less. Yeah, great. From beginning to end. For instance, okay, love Grant Cardone and his stuff. Uh, really, really kind of really upbeat guy in, in the vein of who I am. Literally, I think he's kind of my brother from another mother. A lot of times. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, he's got one, success is my duty. It's really simple, okay? Um, write your goals down twice a day, big goals. Like, I'm going to have a McIntyre a lot every city in the U.S., over 30,000 people. Okay. I'm going to have a best the best-selling book he was talk, you were talking about here. Yeah, the planner, okay? The, this is somebody else's planner that I use, okay? Quote of the day, targets, like your immediate targets for the day, and then your successes for that day, because vitamin G is a very important thing to take at the end of the day, so what were your, your accomplishments that day? And then write your big goals down again, so you're handling them in your head twice a day and staying on course. And you know what's important to you at that point in time. Then you write out your day just to reinforce it. My, mine's on a on a a, a plan, uh, my iPhone, you know what I mean, and, uh, and on Google calendars here, my calendar, right? Mm -hmm. My entire day, right, right there. So these goals here. You see, I mean, it's crazy, right? And I can follow that, but dude, I'm just like a zombie. Like if I'm just following that, I mean, I can't. It's not burning to my brain. You know what I'm saying? It's there, but I'm just like a zombie. I'm getting kicked around, okay? Um, and then. If I sit down and look at that every morning, early, and I mean early, and, and write it all down, and for each client appointment, I might put what I think that client's worth and put a goal for the day. Okay. And I might formulate my goal for the day. I may ask a question at the top I always well, do. Well, that was, that was one of the things you were talking about in one of your videos was um, about accepting all... You know, if, there's a, if you have an appointment at 2, accept another one at 2, and another one at 2... And then decide which one is the most at, at, yeah. at that moment, and well, those switch them around if need be. Good problems to have, right? Those are great problems to have. Mm -hmm. Act first, figure the rest out later. Right. It's a very good statement. Okay. Yeah. Y you know what I'm saying? Get just do just full bore, run into the war, dude, with like your boxer shorts on and like a brick. You know what I'm saying? And just figure the rest out later. There's going to be some guns laying around or something. You know, you figure it out there. Right. Okay. But just get in there. And it's good problems to have. Um, as, but you get the commitment, too. Plus, you get the commitment. Yeah. Okay. You get a yes from your client. We're on the books. Mm -hmm. All right. You're committed to my office. Okay. Now we're going to bump you. Okay. <laughs> right. We might move you earlier. We might move you later. Yeah. Okay. If you got multiple attorneys, we might slide you over to an associate if that's your firm. We might, we might think outside of the box, and instead of thinking I work nine to five, or just see clients one to four, or one to five, dude, I'm gonna see you at five, six, seven that day. You okay. wouldn't have them in the fold by that point. Yeah, well. you got them in. Okay. Yeah. Right. If you're trying to hit revenue goals and make money and grow and expand, and I think you have to be expanding or you're dying. Okay. You gotta keep up with if you have competition and you think that you know you gotta keep. You need to you need to be the lawyer or, or the business. You need to keep up with inflation. You need to outpace that, right? Mm -hmm. All that stuff's nipping at your heels all the time. So you got. Well, that was one of the funny funny parts of one of your videos was uh, one of the questions that you were answering was, "What if I have too many clients?" And that seemed that's the dumbest it question. Was, yeah, well, that's so. basically how you answered it. It was quite yeah. funny. What if I have too many clients? Or if I get I want to take that person and smack them <laughs> right in the face, dude. I'm serious, dude. Like, if you have too many clients, yeah, it, dude, it didn't seem give them to me. Give me some of your clients. I'll figure out how to handle them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's dumb. Yeah. That's just, if you're asking that question, number one, you ought to slap yourself in the face. Number two, you ought to say, oh, and that should make you realize that that's a great problem to have. So you need to right. see them on the weekend, or you need to work hard, or maybe you need to hire more people. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know what I was going to do. The planner. 
with a rock star lawyer planner. To skip there for a second. Um, a great feature, which is what I do. What I'll do. I swear, he, uh, the dude autographed it for my kid Jordan. And Jordan, Jordan's not using his other one right now. He's got another one too, so I, I grabbed it because I got mine stolen the other day. Um, so yeah, I like put down what I thought it was worth, right? Whether I got it, whether I got it or not, and how much I got. <laughs> I mean, like it, like it's a game. Like one, I thought might be that, and I actually got that. Okay, which is pretty good. Okay. Um, and I had a lot of prospects that might be future pays, you know? Right. Future pays. But I need to, for me, it's important to keep track of that. Mm-hmm. I need to be able to hit targets. And I, and keep in mind, you know, I can't help anybody unless they become my client. Right. I can't help my kids unless I beat them, you know what I'm saying? Like clothe them, you know? So, so, so a feature for me would be check boxes for... Leads converted to clients. Now I'm talking about another book here, okay? That's the planner, all right? Okay. But it's just designed for business minded lawyers. Okay. You want to really track their day. That's the point. So when you plug into like lawyergreg.com or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. It's an entire philosophy and lifestyle and way to run your practice by yourself with a bunch of attorneys and a huge firm. It doesn't matter. Okay. Just how to start off the day early, putting everything down, and then getting after it all day. Right. Um, check boxes for leads converted to clients. Uh, blanks for spots to place in money expected. And I know what that looks like. It'll be like, you know. You know, maybe there'll be a, an E there, you know. Expected. Expected and earns both start with an E. Expected made. estimate what we'll call them, global goals, expected, actual, okay, actual, so that's what you earn, and whether, uh, say, check box, for client, I mean, for converting, I mean, something like that, you could, you could probably, you could probably easily convert that for bankers and Speeds the clients of the industry. Yeah, specific. Yeah. yeah. But you want the whole lifestyle where you know you're popping up in the morning, you watch some training videos, you're you're excited about what you're doing, you're planning out your day, and you're going to knock it out. Okay. Right. And then uh, you're talking about right goals. We'll have uh, a section for have a whole section for uh, Daily goals and global goals. Global goals. That's right. And that makes sense to me. And then, and then there's going to be. See, he calls them targets. And I understand targets. Or task. I don't know. 
advantage of global goals, um, daily tasks, daily targets. Target sounds a little clearer. Daily tasks can you know, take up a long period of time and help. Now those kind of things are tasks. But so those are some of your, what are you trying to, you know, in essentials, what? Trying to accomplish. Are you yeah, are you getting done today? And, and I also have uh, have a completed go by page as the first. Highlights and side notes. So it's like one that's all filled out. Like mine. Like maybe I'll give an example. Yeah, examples, of mine. right? Yeah. yeah, I'll give one of mine for a day. Black out, you know, change client names or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll, I'll give one of mine, and then uh, and then you know highlights and you know the daily targets. I'll have those in parentheses, like. What are you getting done today? You know, um, you know. Oh, dude, I think uh, um, I love the question. Who has my money today? <laughs> I love that, dude. I absolutely love it. You don't know how much money I made asking who has my money today. That's a good question. Because because you start thinking, oh crap, who are, who are all the people? That we've like logged time in that we hadn't even billed in our trust account. You know, the I, know I, I know I've heard that. I can't remember if I've heard that from you in one of your videos or from something else. I've definitely heard that somewhere. Yeah. I'm sure it was one of the videos that you did. One thing we do want to do. So that, I mean, that would be a great list, by the way. That'd be a great list for the daily planner. And then, and then, uh, um, yeah, that would be a good time for for a section. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who has my money today? And then I'm like, dude, been asking, you know, paralegal 50 times for the last 30, you know, 30 days to bill my freaking trust account clients and move the money over. You know what I mean? Make it happen today. You know what I mean? Man, there's 10, you know, maybe several grand right there right. that you just haven't realized because you haven't done it. And, uh, and then there's also not that it's all about money, but I want the uh, daily goal, the daily revenue goal. I don't know if I call it the daily score. Daily score. <laughs> That's so bad. That's awesome. And then have your daily score. Like once you list all your clients there, once you think the expected money is, what's your daily goal? Daily score. The scoreboard. Uh, you know, it's called the scoreboard section. Why not? It works. Yeah, so it's the scoreboard section. Um, then have daily goal. And then there's uh, the same thing. There's expected, right? Mm -hmm. And then actual. See what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, they're expected and actual. That's right. the daily score somewhere. Now, and, then, and then you break down all of it with your clients. Now, something that would be very interesting, and we can do some work with the planner. We could do a whole series of you know planners, planner videos, okay? Um, the planner. <clears throat> what would be very interesting is to walk in and say, okay, I want to make 10 grand today. So that's the question. Does your schedule drop what you make or does your goal drop what you make? It, For should, be your, it should be your goal. I right. mean, your, your goal. If you have that goal, you're more likely to do whatever it takes to make that goal. That, that's a great chapter, by the way. Okay, and it's called, or, or it's within the goal setting chapter. And we'll call that going in reverse. Or working backwards. Do you see what I'm saying yeah, about working yeah. backwards? Yeah. I'll come back to delay negation and control because we totally have not given that any attention. 
Where's the golf setting? That's chapter eight. Eight. Okay. So that can be driving in reverse. Stop thinking. Forwards. Start working. is what drives productivity. Goal. I'm going to the Building a nut. A screw. A rocket engine. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. the obvious answer is it takes all parts, right? But you really get inspired. achieve great things by first setting the ridiculously lofty goal of going to the moon, right? Yeah. So I guess what we're talking about, to back that back out, I think it's somehow related to what we're talking about, is the scoreboard. So, what drives your daily revenues? Is it your clients you're seeing that day? Your advertising. Did last month, or your um, <clears throat> your staff, right? Mm -hmm. So the answer is not easy. It's it's not. The broad answer is yes. result of all that it is the sum of all the moving parts. But if you really want to find that high gear, Shift into another. How about overachieve? Really amplify revenues and service and everything. Revenues, service, growth. You have to stretch. is to um, set lofty 
passionate, inspiring, ridiculous, out of reach goals. That's right. Dude, if you can't stretch, if you can't get uncomfortable, if you can't hurt, you're never like if you're working out for your brain or your or your you muscles or whatever. Gotta get out of your comfort zone. Gotta get out of the comfort zone. That's the do crazy shit too, okay? <laughs> so not not only do crazy shit, right? So just getting used to that mindset. It's really training that mindset in you, right? Yeah. As a skill almost. You don't only have to do crazy shit. I have to set crazy goals. I mean, you could have a section in there that's more on the lines of setting ridiculous, impossible goals for that month or for the year, even, and then over the period of. I absolutely hate achievable goals. You'll read total books. I mean, business, there's total, like a section of the business book section from goal setting, you know. And, and it's all about setting achievable goals. Yeah, you want to Dude, why the hell would I want to set achievable goals? That'd be dumb. I mean, I know I can achieve those things. Mm -hmm. That's like telling me to walk across the room. So I know I can freaking walk across the room. I don't know. Can I run a marathon? Yeah, There's a, a section in that. Achieving impossible. Uh, or what is your ridiculously impossible goal for this month? And then like you do whatever you can to get there. What is your... Stupid. And if that means running naked down the street, as you say, then what is your stupid goal for the month? <laughs> I mean, how is it? Just come up with stupid goals, dude. Like, oh, we're gonna go to the moon. What is that? JFK? Yep. Like, okay, whatever, dude. <laughs> oh, I'm okay, sure, it's I'm like sure dude, there was so many people. Who likes the blinking lights? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like nobody even had a laptop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like some protractors and some pencils and stuff. Let's go to the moon. Okay. So, uh, you can't grow a muscle, a brain, or a business without getting outside of your comfort zone repeatedly. All the time. Mm -hmm. Become comfortable in that zone. Become comfortable being uncomfortable. And dude, if you can do that, then you're going to grow. I mean, if you can apply that. You can apply this frequently all the time, back to back to back days, right? Over a long period of time. Yeah. You will achieve truly great things, right? your stupid goal of the month? Step or exercise? Whatever. Whatever we're calling those, okay? Maybe we come up with something new. Like for the chapter. We need, we need like, for each chapter, we need, it needs to be, I just, I like the idea, because I did that in chapter one, I did those four steps or whatever. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean each chapter, making it like uh, some ex exercises at the end where you're like participating in it. You know what I mean? Right. Where you're doing, you know? Right. I, I saw, I kind of like that. I did that with chapter one and I just think, that would be nice to have the whole chapter and then uh, four exercises that are really going to get you there. One thing that can make it easier to put a whole book together is you've got your chapter title and then make sure you have subtitles within that chapter. You figure out what your subtitle is going to be in that chapter yeah. so that you can break it up mm -hmm. into little sections. It makes it, makes it so much easier. To, to, to eat the elephant one bite at a time? Yeah. 
and, and, and exactly. systematically. I think so too. And that's kind of what I'm putting in here. Like yeah. all these little blurbs, like scoreboard, um, driving in reverse. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, all those are great. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think we can, we can fill out and we can riff. I mean, I can, we can riff on each one of those. And that Subsections can really expand really what we're doing because yeah. there's yeah. going to be sections in each in each chapter that we we haven't yet thought of, and those are going to get bigger and bigger. And so, so on this one, let's see. We got uh, goal setting and plan for. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I love this planner idea. I mean, seriously, I'm going to take a pic of this and put it in there too. Okay, yeah. right? <laughs> okay, and yeah. I mean, really, I think these. Uh, this type of stuff, or even the notes. I don't know. Maybe we just put that in the expanded ebook, the ebook version, or something. You know, but I think those are cool man, to start things off. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I like this. So that I mean, to me, the school. Uh, just to finish off that idea too, about the driving in reverse, what drives productivity. Um, it does take all parts, okay. Um, in the scoreboard, okay. The end answer for me, how about from me, is, is that you have to do, you have to put together the machine. So the machine is important. Stupid goals. Not just stupid goals, but uh, um, machine imp is important, but the daily inspiration. Sometimes it's harder for me to hard for me to think past the day. Like you, you know what I'm saying? Like what am I doing? Right. The right. time gets so compacted, so I have to keep like these thoughts going, like the broad goals and then the daily goals. Um, but the daily inspiration um, I'm going to say is uh, for, for lack of a better more creative term it's more important that we can figure that out um, um, so the end answer is is that you have to put together the machine the, the company, the business, whatever all those moving parts that we were talking about which is important but uh, set crazy goals for the day Revenue goals. Ask the question. Who has my money? Who? I hate to use. I hate to use that term. How about where is my money today? Show me the money. Find the thing. Right now, I think who is my money is pretty good. who may also say who has my money today. I've heard that before. So, so uh, I love that, that saying, though. Uh, where is my money today? We'll, 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 we'll hammer that out. But that's the whole point. you got to ask that question, okay? Yeah. Uh, so, when these two concepts are used Conjunction revenue store. You start drive backwards or drive in reverse at that point. Back out.
yet to be taken. On the trust account. And paid at our firm. We have five clients coming in today. Or we need to call leads or prospective clients. Follow up. Get them on the calendar. Call in clients who owe us money. See if they would like to pay over the phone, right? And so on and so forth to achieve. So you back it out. Right. And back into that number. But you gotta set that number. So I think that's the need for those numbers and that type of plan. Okay, that's a good start on the bill setting part. And how it can work with a nice design plan. Okay. I mean just literally just setting your goals for the next day increases your productivity in that regard. Oh god. Oh that's another thing. That's another thing. No, that's another thing. Believe it, writing the Form, okay. I mean, this is so important. Here's another step. Don't write down your money goals overall. For each client for the schedule your schedule for the day for one week do right all for one week compare Compare your revenues, your drive, and the schedule, everything. Command your schedule, um, not productivity. That's what I wanted to talk about was uh, right. Or like all cast this. You can write down your schedule with an APA. Just write it down. Computer calendars are necessary and great, but writing it down makes it real. Yeah, so are great. Um, iPhone calendars are awesome. Reminders. Necessary, but I'm going to 
So cow graze. But <laughs> um, you will be leading from behind if you depend on this type of schedule. You will constantly feel the shocking prod of your reminders slash calendar getting you hurriedly from one item thing to the next and one thing can be one beating You will. I mean, that's, I have a lot of experience with calendars in my life and will be a frequent schedule. So, uh, I don't know how that brings up an analogy of cash and credit card. You use a credit card, you're not, it's not like you're really spending these things, but the second you get the cash out, you already know you are. Yeah, you, you can really see it. You see it right yeah. there. But it's something, how about this? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put in there. Um, Insert writing brain connection and research materials I mean I would love it if you could help me research some of these things okay mm -hmm. and, and footnotes to put you know items to put in what why, why aren't I able to have colors here. I always, oh, there he is. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm popping this off. So, yeah, so put in the writing brain connection here. There's such a connection between my hand doing this, uh, you know, and my thoughts are, um, you know, maybe it is a connection. Primitive man picking up a stick and cracking open a coconut, you know? It is it is strange though that or you can write yeah. this like yeah. you've done here. Or you could do the same thing on that computer. It's totally different. And yeah, that, that really would that really does make more of an impact. Sometimes I have to get it out. Like this, like a word chart, right? Right. Or, you know, other things where I'll, I want to do big planning and big plans. And dude, that's when I'll grab colored markers and a freaking poster board and start drawing things out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's where it really kind of comes together. I mean, I love Evernote for organization and everything else, but for creativity and for staying power, it's not as good. Yeah. Uh, the computer, you know? And so there's just that, I don't know if it's like from primitive man, you know, using, uh, cracking open a col coconut, you know, uh, uh, I guess the point is using primitive tools. There is a real and powerful connection between using your little hand to write down anything, including your schedule on paper, goals included. Write down your freaking schedule.
still use the phone. I still hear scheduling practice management system. Still shooting words here. Your management system. your schedule and goals in a planner first thing in the morning on the front and out of here early and you will no longer be led around schedule. The world will create more time for you. Your days and appointments will feel big and spacious. This is really true. It's, 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 it's like, it's amazing. Um, you will be leading yourself around ahead of the game. <clears throat> Every day. So if you do this day after day after day, Results become how about the results will be staggering. Ooh. You will have it's a good towel wood. Formed a lifetime habit. Just this advice and approach right, right here, right here, will make you millions of dollars for a lifetime. I truly believe that. It is amazing the days that I don't take the time to do it. Uh, you know, and that's, uh, it's also, you know, the, a little planning goes a long way to, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's true. But, uh, but just writing it down, it's amazing how it drives your entire day, especially when you put you're in control at that point, as opposed to the other way around. You yeah, get pushed around by your schedule. That writing the goals in the evening, that that was a, a Charles Schwab thing. Really? Yeah. That was one of his, I can't remember if it was a $25 million idea he had. They told people or 25000 one or the other. But he, uh, that was one of his secrets, apparently, that he uh, came out with later. What was it, writing them down every day? Writing your goals for the following day right. down in the evening. So your product, your productivity will just absolutely soar if you if you do this. If you because it's, it's, it's in your head and maybe you sleep on it. 
It could be that, yeah, it could be. Could be you're, you're just, you just see those goals in the morning, you're motivated, you, you, you start getting into them immediately. Mm -hmm. It's as though you, you've got that spark up the butt. It's how you're programming yourself to do that. Yeah. And most, yeah. I mean, what's amazing is most of the great things that I do, that I think I do anyway, that I think are great, or problems I solve, I don't do it while I'm have my nose to the grindstone. Like I'm sleeping on it. You know what I'm sleeping right. on or I'm playing golf or something or doing something. You know what I mean? It's like, oh man. Your mind's relaxed. Yeah, and then my mind doesn't work for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, I guess the theme would be stop being pushed around with your schedule, you know. Or uh, don't, don't let your schedule be a bully. Delegation and control, another total chapter. Yeah. Uh, delegation and control, um, the fear, the systems, that'll be a part of a small or big business, okay? Just talking about really implementing systems, fleshing out systems, uh, right. putting a backbone in place to run your whole firm. I think that'll be a good chapter. Oh, yeah, I think that's going to be really important, especially for, for younger lawyers coming coming in and starting their own business. We were talking about delegation. What were we talking about delegation? We were talking about delegation in the sense that we got off the other. Taxes, um, oh yeah, taxes, um, the heck is that word? Um, trust accounting, accounting, um, letter writing, Legal research. And they're not doing it out of fear. Um, delegation is a key to growth. Give up some control. The more you give up, the more and faster you will grow. That's a tough one for people. Letting go of that control. And wrap your mind around. doesn't mean don't do quality work. That means, ooh, that's another good one, hiring. That means hiring the right team. Don't do it yourself. Have a staffing company do the interviewing and sorting for you. Search. You name it. 
washing your own car. You name it. And I guess the, the game is time here. Um, game's time. Multiplying time. The only way you to do it is to pass on a piece of yourself and your process to someone else. program them and empower them. To take your brain and processes and break them down into just delegable task, delegatable, mm. yeah, delegatable. That's my word, isn't it? Can you add it? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I'll understand what you mean anyway. To task. So, so yeah, breaking them down, set, and that goes into systems, okay? Yeah. Really, the entire thing is a system. Right. So I'm breaking out, if you look up the hallway, you go by every office, you know what I mean? I'm breaking down something I know how to do. Right. And trying to right. empower somebody to be able to do it, right? So they yeah. can work on all these files. And what you're talking about, the result... Exponentially increasing the amount of files slash work slash clients you can handle, and the end result being exponentially. section of uh, a, a section from one chapter on like, multitasking um, dude I don't know I, mean, I don't know how much I take on multitasking oh yeah I agree it sucks it sucks dude I don't get, I don't get <laughs> smashed, done. I don't get anything done you know what I'm saying um, uh, delegation and control you don't do it is uh, the fear and control. The game is time. See, so, yeah, you're going to exponentially increase increase these things. Um, anyway, it can be applied to any business. And then systems, there's a whole part on systems that we can do right there to fill up that chapter, okay? chapter should be uh, should be carried over and expanded upon. Make the book small law big business. Okay. So um, does that make 
makes sense? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So I think I expanded out a lot of the ideas. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure. And 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 I've got uh, the planner. Oh, that's not the planner. Where's the planner? I've got the planner. The planner. The Rockstar Lawyer planner, which is going to have all these parts that Robert and I were talking about tonight in there. Okay. Um, let's start designing that out. I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to get that hammered out. We'll put that up on the LawyerGreg.com website, which is in, in process of being developed right now. So I'm going to take, all right, I'm going to sign off. Okay, Robert and I are going to finish up and tune in. We're going to do some of these, I want to know about all the ideas and 